In this video, you'll learn how to track user engagement on your WordPress website using Google Analytics and Monster Insights. Being able to do this is a great way to test out what are your top performing articles, what are your top performing conversion rates? What are your best performing ad units if you're using AdSense? And so using Google Analytics and Muster Insights will tell you a lot about what's going on with your website, how users are engaging in it, and how you can improve that data. That's the ultimate goal is improving the data, what's working on your site and getting it going. By default, you should already have Google Analytics working on your site and using Monster Insights as well. If you don't have that set up, you can watch this video to get both of those set up and get it up and running quickly. So I'm gonna go to my WordPress dashboard and I already have Monster Insights set up. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to Insights and we'll go to Reports. And one of the first things that you want to do is you can check out the top posts and pages for your website. And this just gives you a great overview of what are your most popular pages. So let's scroll down. And this is my test site. So I know that the most important pages I have are up here. And maybe I want to focus all of my efforts on creating more content like this or even improving those as well. It would also come in handy if say this is my landing page for a product that I wanna sell, I can look at that and see just how well is it doing. What I can also do with these areas is go ahead and create something like a content upgrade or maybe a targeted lead magnet to really improve my conversion or improve or increase my email subscribers on that. If your website is more about business and you need to track how people are engaging with your forms on your website, say a quote form or what have you, then you can go to insights and let's go to add-ons. And what we can do here is we can add an add-on that will track our form conversion. So scrolling down, I'm looking for the forms and this will enable tracking of how many people viewed my form, how many submissions, and then it'll calculate the conversion rate for that. So you just want to install it and then it will activate automatically. Once you do that, then you can start tracking just how well the forms are working on your site. And then I'll show you where those will show. Once you have that set up, you can go to your Google Analytics dashboard as well. And you can see a few things on here. So once you install that add-on, you give a little bit of time for people to interact with your forms. You can go to your Google Analytics, go over to behaviors, go down to events and then overview. And then what you would see is you would see the form event category here. I don't have that set up, but that's where you would see that as well. The next user tracking area that we can look at is tracking e-commerce stores in Google Analytics. We can do this by first setting up the e-commerce tracking, enhanced e-commerce tracking in Google Analytics. And let me just show you how you turn that on first. So from your dashboard, you wanna click on your admin area, make sure you're in the view that you want to work on. And then over all the way on the right under view, do e-commerce settings. You want to make sure that the enable e-commerce is turned on and enable e-commerce settings, enhanced e-commerce settings is turned on as well. Then to have Monster Insights do all of the tracking for you, you'll want to go back to your WordPress dashboard from the insights add-on area that we were in earlier. We also want to do Monster Insights e-commerce. We want to turn on the e-commerce section. So this is the one we want. So we want to click install and then it'll activate it as well. And then we can go to settings. We'll scroll up and let's go to e-commerce to make sure that use enhanced e-commerce is turned on. And you see, it'll tell you how you can set it up for Google Analytics, which we just did. And then depending on if you have WooCommerce or EDD or easy digital downloads, you can do that. We also have MemberPress and Lifter LMS. These are membership sites and learning management system that you can track the enhanced e-commerce effects as well. So if you have a shop, then you'll want to turn these on so that you can see things like shopping behavior, checkout behavior. To show you what this will look like, I'm, I'll show you a shopping cart that Google has set up so that you can see that in action. So we'll go to conversions and go to e-commerce, but you should see this on your site with your e-commerce already set up. And you see things like shopping behavior, checkout behavior, performance, product list. And what this will do is it will bring all of the, say conversion rate, how many times people added something to a cart, what your top product is and things like that. 
So having the combination of Monster Insights e-commerce add-on turned on and having the enhanced e-commerce setup with Google Analytics will give you this data. So it's a great way if you're running a, an online store to see user tracking on there. If your site is more about publishing, say you're publishing a lot of content and you're using AdSense to make money, then you can track who's clicking on your ads with Google Analytics and I'll show you how you can do that. First, you'll want to make sure you're on your add-ons and you'll want to install ads and this is strictly for Google AdSense. So let's click install. Once it installs, it'll also activate for you. Once you do that, the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you link your Google Analytics to your AdSense account. So let's head back over to our analytics, go to the site that we are working on, go to that property. Once again, we need to open up the admin area and in the middle, we want to click on AdSense linking. From here, you should see a new AdSense link button and then you need to enable the publisher property ID that you can get from your AdSense account and you can put that in there. Then you wanna make sure that you are set for AdSense for content and then we'll click continue. And from the drop down, you wanna pick the website name that you want to set this up for. And then enable link, great. And once that's done, then you can click done and you're good to go. Now what we can do is go back to our Monster Insights area. We'll go to settings and under publisher, make sure that this is enabled so that it starts tracking that. Now what you'll be able to do is we'll go over to our analytics. We can go back to home, go down to behavior, go down to publisher and overview. And then this is where you'll start to see your ads coming over and what's performing well and how it's doing. Now, if your site is mostly about affiliate marketing, there's a great way to track affiliate and how your affiliate items are doing just by turning on a few items. Monster Insights and Google Analytics let you track your affiliate links. And this is great for if you want to increase partnerships with other companies, you can first track their outbound links to them and then create an affiliate partnership with them. And then you can convert those links into affiliate links. And then you can also track them to see which ones are performing the best and which ones you might need to tweak or maybe remove altogether. So to do that, let's head over to our settings area and go to publisher. And these are the affiliate links that you wanna add in there. Basically, whatever path you're giving, and this is usually in conjunction with pretty links or thirsty affiliates, you usually add this little path example on your website and then it goes there first and then it sends them to the link so you can add them here. Once you do that, then you will be able to look at your reports and find all of your affiliate links and how they're doing. If we go to reports and go under publisher, then you can scroll down, find your top pages. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see your top affiliate links here. Another tracking feature that would be good is to track your bounce rate. So if we go back to our overview area, scrolling down, we can see our bounce rate on the site. And this is also in comparison to the last 30, the previous 30 days. Monster Insights gives you a great overview. And then if you wanted to go in a little bit deeper, you can actually head over to your analytics, go to audience overview, and this will give you the same thing where you can dig in a little bit deeper. You see our bounce rate is here. And then if we wanted to see bounce rates on specific pages, we could even scroll down a little bit further. We'll go down to behavior and we'll go to site content, all pages. From here, it'll show you a column of your most popular pages by page views. And then you'll also see the bounce rate of each particular page. So that'll help you figure out which ones are your highest bounce rates and how can you improve those. Now, a lot of people ask, what is an acceptable bounce rate for your website? And it really just depends on what kind of site you have based on if you're a retail site, if you have a simple landing page, if you have a generation, a lead generation website, or if yours is just like a content website, like a blog or an affiliate site, those all are different. And you can see some basic outline of acceptable bounce rates here. Another indicator for your site is the average session time or the average time on a page. That's this one here. And that gives you a pretty good indication of, are they reading through it? Are they spending a lot of time on there? Are they bouncing really quickly? So the bounce rate can be a little misleading if you provided all the answers that the person needed. 
they got to your site, they read the stuff, and then they left. That would be a high bounce rate, but if they stayed on your site for a while, then that should be a good indicator that you provided value to them. So that's why tracking time spent on your website is really good. Another one that is super great for Monster Insights is you can track scroll depth, meaning how far down the page did somebody go? Tracking scroll depth on your site is also a great indicator of just how far down the page they're going. What is the average scroll depth? That gives you an indication of how much they're reading on your site. So going under reports on our WordPress dashboard, you can go to publishers and this will tell us our scroll depth for our site. I'm scrolling all the way down and I find that for this page, the average scroll for this website, the average scroll depth is about 60%. Another great user tracking feature is to track page views. And that basically tells you how many pages on average a user goes to. The easiest way to check your page views is by going to your analytics section, going basically home or to your audience overview. So go to audience overview and scrolling down, you can see the average number of pages per session. So. The more pages that someone is on maybe means that they're more interested in what your site is about. And that's a good indicator for user tracking. And so those are several different ways that you can track user engagement on your site using Google Analytics and Monster Insights. And thanks for watching. Did you learn something from today's video? If so, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll send more helpful tips to help you manage your WordPress website. And thanks for watching.